be, that is more money than has ever gone into the port sector from the federal government. So this is a once in an op this is a generational opportunity for ports to make their upgrades. I do believe that certain parts of that will have to continue over a significant amount of time, particularly as we look at energy hubs. Energy hubs is somewhat new in the port for a number of port sectors, and it will require multi-year. Um, we're going to have to be pretty strict at sticking to the task to make those energy hubs work. That's great. Thanks. Thanks so much. Yield back. Mr. Crawford. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Excuse me. On the, um, the Federal Highway Administration recently released a final rule to require states and metropolitan planning organizations to establish a new performance measure with declining targets for carbon dioxide emiss emissions attributed to the national highway system. It pursued that rule despite the fact that they didn't have the authority to do so. In fact, that was considered and rejected in IJA negotiations. Uh, further, Federal Highway Administration also rejected concerns about that issue from rural America. It seems like rural states where the largest cities are, by comparison, small towns, uh, you can't meaningfully reduce carbon emissions by building a subway or a bus rapid transit system to attempt to reduce commuter automobile traffic, even if it was affordable. I live in a town, biggest town in my district uh, is almost 80,000. That's a pretty small town. Um, by, by most people's definition, um, even though we have a Starbucks, uh, we're still not a full-fledged metropolitan area. So my question is to, to Ms. Benford, do you feel this new regulation will impact your ability to deliver projects? Yes, I, I would agree with that. Um, I do, we do feel that the Federal Highway Administration um, uh, chose to treat each state, state as the same, and I will echo your words. I, from Wyoming, um, emissions uh, are a fraction of the amount of carbon dioxide emissions compared to more populated states that we produce, and so we are concerned uh, what that impact will be on um, our DOT, what, what projects they'll have to limit to try and meet those standards. Um, same for us, uh, we don't have subways. Um, bike paths between our communities would be hundreds of miles. And with the, the weather, extreme weather that we have, um, just an example from Cheyenne to Laramie, uh, 45 miles, and you could leave Cheyenne at a 70 degree temperature, go over the pass, and it could be you know 30 degrees and snowing. So a bike path in these types of communities would not, would not be relevant. So I think you answered my question in your comments there, but let me, let me ask this. Are you concerned the administration will actually use this rule as a roundabout way to influence project selection? Yes. Yeah. That's my concern as well. Um, I, I want to I stay with you for just a second here. Um, Ms. Benford, I, the administration is requiring project labor agreements, and we're hearing about that from, from contractors. Um, the potential for slowing down the construction pro process and so on. Can you talk about how that may be impacting your ability to sure. get things so, done? So I am aware that um, PLL, PL, PLAs are um, being impacted. We, we do not do federal, um, direct federal contract work, so it's not something that is um, impacting us currently. Broadly speaking, is that an issue that affects uh, your membership? Yes. And how so? I think people are concerned um, about how it will affect uh, the way that they do work um, and limit the, the way they do work. <clears throat> uh, not long ago, Secretary Buttigieg was uh, testifying before this committee. I made a point of asking him about the glacially slow pace of awarding grants. Earlier this month, Eno Transportation published a story highlighting that issue. It read in part, quote, while new appropriations and new grant selection pr press releases have gone up, the rate at which US DOT and selectees have been able to negotiate and execute grant agreements has actually gone down, end quote. One culprit seems to be the increased construction costs, essentially because grant application processes take such, uh, so much time, a project often ends up costing more than the original projection by the time a sponsor learns that it's actually been selected for a grant. Um, I think that's very concerning when we consider how inflation has driven up construction costs. In your experience, Ms. Benford, have you noticed a delay in DOT's rollout of its grant programs? So Wyoming actually doesn't get to participate in a lot of the discretionary grants because we actually struggle to match the federal funding. Um, currently, our local AG chapters are working with our state legislature to uh, increase our funding. funding. Um, but So that's not something that we 
we get to utilize as much as we would like. So in the state of Wyoming, you're kind of behind the eight ball simply because you don't have the population that can fund the match required to participate in some of those grant programs. I get that. But let me ask you this. How has inflation impacted construction costs, generally speaking? I would say that it really hasn't. Um, right now, we haven't seen the work. Again, this is a five-year kind of rollout. So inflation really hasn't impacted uh, the IIJA. It has impacted the work and the cost of the work. And that's just something that you have to pay attention to. You have to be planning. You have to schedule to make sure that your materials are on site um, and, and roll out the project as, as bid. Thank you. Yield back.